Hey, yo, what's good with it, YouTube, man? This is your boy, Rojo. This, this right here, this is the Rojo Room. As you can tell by the title, very interesting. Very interesting. The Aryan Brotherhood were having sales of the Negra and the Sacramento area to fuel their deadly conspiracy at Folsom State Prison. Now, this is from a year and a half ago, but it's very interesting, man. So check it out, man. I'm going to read a quick article and break it down because this is interesting. And I like it. And that's what I'm going to do. If federal prosecutors have their way, Samuel Keaton will be the first of many dominoes to fall in a widespread plot orchestrated by the Aryan Brotherhood, a group that sought to be the most feared white power criminal organization in California. Keaton recently pleaded guilty to running methamphetamine and heroin from Southern California to Sacramento on behalf of the notorious gang, knowing that his activities were part of a larger enterprise that involved multiple killings in different state prisons. He's one of 16 individuals indicted on a host of rackets, hearing, and conspiracy charges. Good luck. While most allegedly belong, while most allegedly belong to the Aryan Brotherhood, one of those charges is a disabled criminal defense attorney who's accused of smuggling contraband into Folsom State Prison in the cushion of his wheelchair. The trafficking enterprise, along with several planned hits, were disrupted by agents from the Federal Drug Administration Enforcement Agency and investigators from the State Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. Court documents filed by those agents, agents, why can't I talk? Court documents filed by those agents reveal a blood-soaked trail leading to these indictments. According to court records, the masterminds behind the conspiracy were Ronald Renegade Yandel, big renegade, and William Billy from Norco Sylvester, two high-ranking members of the Aryan Brotherhood who shared a cell at Folsom Prison. Yandel has a host of criminal convictions going back to 1991, most recently a double murder in Contra Costa County. Sylvester was also doing time for first-degree murder. The Aryan Brotherhood has existed in California prison since 1964, but Sylvester was reportedly part of a newer movement to establish dominance over several competing white power gangs. Federal law enforcement claims the Brotherhood has a blood-in, blood-out policy. To join, <laughs> a prospect has to commit a murder and can only leave by dying. According to the DEA's investigation, that is exactly how Sylvester gained his membership. On October 7th, 2011, Sylvester and another inmate cornered fellow prisoner, Ronald Richardson, in a small concrete yard in Folsom Prison. Authorities say Richardson was in a rival white power gang called United, Skinhead, United Society of Aryan Skinheads, or USAS. Aryan Brotherhood members target USAS members for murder because the USAS has consistently refused to subordinate its California prison members. DEA Special Agent Brian Nayring wrote in an affidavit, the USAS has tried since approximately 2005 to unite all Desperate, disparate, disparate skinhead factions under one umbrella prison gang. In this effort, it's successful. It might result, if this effort is successful, it might result in a skinhead gang that outnumbers the Aryan Brotherhood. Good luck with that. Sylvester allegedly gained Brotherhood membership by doing his part to stop that. Surveillance footage showed him descending on Richardson in the exercise yard and stabbing him in the head with a makeshift knife. He then started driving the blade into Richardson's neck and back. By the time correctional officers responded, his spine was partially severed and nearly every major organ was punctured. Authorities allege that the Aryan Brotherhood also targeted inmates belonging to the skinhead wolf pack, the Golden State Skins, and the American Front. The Aryan Brotherhood went after non-white gangs, too, on August, ooh, on August 12th night. <laughs> I'm going to talk right. I'm going to talk right. On August 12, 2015, Hugo Yogi Pinnell, a member of the Black Gorilla Family Prison Gang, was walking through Folsom's Bee Yard when he was attacked. Court documents state that Pinnell had been making confrontational remarks to white power gang members for years, and that the killing and that killing him was 
of top priority for the Brotherhood. Members Jason Beaver Weaver <laughs> and Wayland Pinchford Stab Pinnell near the yard's canteen window. A nearby CDCR guard deployed a grenade to stop the attack, but Weaver continued his assault. Weaver climbed on top of Pinnell and straddled him. He continued to forcibly stab Pinnell in the back while Pitchford pinned his legs. Another CDCR inmate deployed another grenade to stop the attack. When the grenade went off, Weaver was unfazed. He continued to stab Pinnell's back in an up and down motion. The killings of Richardson and Pinnell are both listed as crimes within the, with the, within the conspiracy charges against Yanell and Sylvester. In 2014, agents from the DEA Sacramento office began tracking a woman who was allegedly selling large amounts of methamphetamines and heroin in North Sacramento. Jenna Queensberry first showed up on agents' radar as they investigated the family-affiliated Irish Mafia. And now that's also known as fame. I did something about them a little while back. During that probe, agents used undercover drug buys and wiretaps to determine that Queensbury was actually taking her directives from Yandel inside of Folsom Prison. According to prosecutors, Yandel received drug orders from Queensbury, Queensbury by way of a contraband cell phone and then had Brotherhood members Travis Burhop contact his network of dealers in Southern California to fill the order. Keaton, who was a convicted car thief, who was on parole, acted as a runner between Burhop suppliers in Los Angeles and Queensbury in Sacramento. Undercover DEA agents. Uh -oh, where did it go? Hold on one second. It just moved for no reason. Undercover DEA agents allegedly bought large quantities of drugs from Queensbury in places that included Sacramento's Red Lion Inn and the AMPM store on Northgate Avenue. Their reports say Queensbury had a stash house on Millet Way and was selling heroin for roughly a thousand dollars amounts. While watching Queensbury, agents began intercepting text messages from Yardell, telling her to coordinate with a man named Kevin. These texts allegedly referred to Kevin McNamara, a licensed criminal defense attorney who was representing Yardell's cellmate Sylvester. Court documents indicated that McNamara, who uses a wheelchair, had no criminal record. Agents soon spotted Keaton and Queensbury having clandestine meetings with McNamara. On August 11, 2016, McNamara arrived at Folsom Prison accompanied by a woman who claimed to be his paralegal to meet with Sylvester. Prison investigators monitored the meeting on a soundless video feed. They reportedly observed both McNamara and his supposed paralegal making suspicious movements as they spoke to the inmate. After the meeting, investigators immediately searched Sylvester, finding a new iPhone and tobacco hidden in a hand-sewn pocket in his waistband, as well as 20 grams of methamphetamine stashed in his rectum. Dun, 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 dun. As McNamara and the woman were leaving the prison, they were also searched. In the seat cushion of McNamara's wheelchair, officials found three new phones, plastic wrappers, and cell phone power cables. While being questioned, the woman reportedly told investigators that she and McNamara had already made five smuggling trips to Folsom Prison. McNamara was arrested and has been charged with distribution of methamphetamines. As the scope of the investigation of the Aryan Brotherhood widened, the DEA claims to have found evidence of three additional prison killings carried out by the gang between 2016 and 2018. The victims being Doe Maynard, Zachary Scott, and Donald Pequeen. Agent says... Agents say they also actively stopped the planned assassinations of three other inmates. A total of 16 individuals were indicted in the conspiracy by the U.S. Attorney's Office in Eastern District of California. Yardell and Sylvester are charged with five counts of murder, three counts of attempted murder, and multiple drug trafficking charges. If convicted, they potentially face the death penalty. Keaton pleaded guilty on November 30th to conspiracy to participate in a racketeering enterprise and conspiracy to distribute heroin and methamphetamine. He faces a maximum sentence of life in prison. We have found pounds and pounds of methamphetamine, heroin, fentanyl, and several weapons, U.S. Attorney McGregor Scott said when the indictments were announced. And we've actually seized a house here in Sacramento, which we believe was purchased with the drug proceeds and used by the Aryan Brotherhood. Isn't that a great story? I told you guys that was a good one. You got all kinds of killings. You finally got for the first time an actual link 
to the Aryan Brotherhood being responsible for taking out Yogi. Now, that's always been thought, whoop de whoop and Man, that's the closest it's been to confirm that I've seen. So, uh, yeah. What'd you guys think? That was a good one, huh? I told you. Oh, um, AB's not playing, bro. There's the skinheads aren't going to take over California prisons. It's just not going to happen. You know, I've, I've I've talked to some people, you know, that are active white boys of stature in prison. And historically, the AB in the state of California hasn't really recruited much. They've been very selective. They haven't been focused on trying to gain as many members as the, the homies from either north or south. But he says right now they're actually doing some some nice recruiting. Like I talked, like I told you guys about fame. Fame is one of their extended arms. You know what I mean? The Wolf Pack, all them other guys. They didn't want to listen. They didn't want to cooperate. They're on the bad news list. No matter how few ABs there are or aren't, for every 10 wolf packs or skinheads, it takes a half an AB member to have to yield the same kind of influence. And that's just how it is. And that's how it's going to continue to be for the foreseeable future. Times are changing. People are rebelling. People are s and Ying. People are doing whatever they do nowadays with this independent generation that's just different, man. I'm not saying better or worse, just different. Times are changing. Could it change in the future? For sure, it could change for every group. But the odds are that it's very unlikely. You know, we focus a lot on Northern indictments and Southern indictments. The woods get their fair share. You know what I mean? And the reason that the North and the South and the woods get hit so much is because they're not playing. Straight up. Now, look, we talk about rivals and this and that. Sometimes the rivals are kind of within your own people. You know, you would think skinheads and AB would be on the same page. Not all the time. And it has deadly consequences. You know, no matter what people think, these groups that have been established, you know, since the 50s and 60s, it just doesn't go away. Whether they're not recruiting a lot, whether it seems like their power is dwindling, it's not, man. People are going to respect the OG groups, bro. And that's just a fact. Anyway, YouTube, that was interesting. Man, you got lawyers bringing work in and phones. You got white on white crime. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You always hear about black on black crime. There's some white on white crime. And uh, them dudes are going to continue to be about their action, man. You know, even more so on a federal level. You know, there's nothing soft about the AB. You know, a lot of people think about Woods and how easy they are. One of them AB members comes for you. They're not going to stop. They're with the business. You know, you can't take that away from them, 100%. Hope you guys enjoyed that one, man. I enjoyed reading that one. And I usually don't like reading articles, but that one was phenomenal. Hope you all have a productive Tuesday. It's your boy Rojo. This is the Rojo Room. I'm out of here.